Hey, I'm Flavius Dino. I'm a technical marketing engineer here at Spacelift. As a former practitioner, I've seen firsthand two of the main challenges of using Ansible for configuration management. The first one is running Ansible playbooks in large or complex environments, and the second one is linking provisioning and configuration management together to get a flexible workflow across all your infrastructure pipelines. In today's video, I will show you how Spacelift can help you solve these two critical challenges. So in my example, I've already used Spacelift to provision my infrastructure resources using Terraform, and now we are ready to configure them with Ansible. So first, let's see how we can use Ansible stacks inside of Spacelift. Now we can uh, go and see our Ansible stack getting created. So it's this one right here with the Ansible dev label. So in this example, we are using a playbook that checks for the available disk space on your EC2 instances. And because we are using very small EC2 instances, this will fail initially. And this is exactly what we want. But I'll sugar a run and just let you let you see it. So now the plan has finished. As you can see, we don't have any errors. And that's normal because in this uh, task that checks the available disk space, we are just skipping it when there is a dry run. But now after I will confirm it, we are going to see that this is going to fail. Let's wait for the apply to finish. As you can see, this has already, fin already finished with, a, with an error. And this is because the available disk space is 5.6 gigabytes and the threshold is set to 10 gigabytes. We also have this tasks view in which you can actually see everything that has run on your uh, EC2 instances. So we can also, we can see the details, the task name, the host name, the playbook, what's the status when it was performed. And we can even see the logs. So this is why we have an error. There is also this legend right here that shows you all the colors. Uh, we can overcome this by either making a change to the playbook to solve the issue with the disk space. Or what we could do is we could actually trigger with a custom runtime config and change the threshold. So in order to do that, basically this will change the available threshold to two gigabytes. So I'll trigger a run like that and let's wait for it to finish. As you can see, because we've changed the threshold from 10 gigabytes to 2 gigabytes, everything ran successfully. And now we can go here and we can see that the status of our host is OK. And we can see everything that has happened in here. So everything was OK. Now, one of the big challenges when running Ansible at scale is visibility into the success or failure of your runs. It's usually pretty hard to see how things happen and where errors occur. Let me show you what we do for visibility. So in your resources view, the same you have for your infrastructure as code, where you can see absolutely everything that you have deployed with your Spacelift account, you have a new tab called Configuration Management. If you click on it, you're going to see all the hosts you have in your Spacelift account that were touched by your Spacelift account, basically. So in here, you can see at a glance what is the status for each and every one of for all of them. And if you click on individual ones, you are going to see what kind of tasks have run on these hosts. So you can group them in many ways. You can group by host, you can group by tasks. So for example, if I group by tasks, you're going to see what tasks have uh, run successfully, what tasks have failed and stuff like that. You can even filter them. You can filter by host. You can filter by playbook. And you can either see them as a diagram or as a list if you want. So you have full flexibility of showing whatever details you want in here. But keep in mind that with this view, you're going to see all the hosts you have touched with your Spacelift account. With Spacelift, you can do provisioning and configuration in a single workflow. This is done with our stack dependencies feature. For this example, we have a dependency created between a Terraform stack and an Ansible one, and we are also sharing an output between them. Let's see this in action. So I'm at the Terraform one, and I'm going to trigger a run. 
And as soon as I hit trigger, if I go to the Ansible one, you are going to see that we have a run queued on it. So this will wait until the um, dependency finishes successfully. So let's wait for this one to, to finish. Now run finished successfully and we've created four EC2 instances. Each of them have a, a tag for their environment. Instance one has the environment dev, instance two has the environment dev as well, instance three has the environment QA and instance four has the environment production. So this output is sent directly to the Ansible one. Let's see what's happening on the Ansible one. So it's in preparing right now. We will wait for it to finish. And as you can see, everything finished successfully. And we can check all the four hosts. And basically, we will see that some of them uh, templated the home page for prod, others for QA, and others for dev. So this one is a dev host. This one is a dev host as well. This one is a QA host. And this one is a production one. So as you can see, provisioning is just one part of the story. With Spacelift, you can easily orchestrate your infrastructure pipelines, whether you're using Terraform, OpenTOF, or Ansible. And you can easily deliver secure, cost-effective, and resilient infrastructure fast.